Helping Humanity. One Community Weekly Progress Update number 288. One Community is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We are creating open source and free shared blueprints and resources, tools and tutorials, and do it yourself instructions for highest good living. Creating solution models that create additional solution creating models in the service of all life on this planet. My name is Jay Sable, and I'm the executive director of the One Community 51C3 nonprofit organization. This is a weekly progress update number 288, September 30th, 2018 edition. One Community's mission, if you're not familiar with it already, is to bring together the people with the consciousness for the highest good of all life on the planet and to create self replicating teacher demonstration hubs as a path to global sustainability. And this is really about helping humanity help themselves. Because from our perspective, helping humanity is really not possible unless humanity embraces the concept of helping themselves. And so what we're trying to do is make mainstream is, is make sustainability mainstream, not just mainstream acceptable, but mainstream desirable. And so everything that you see happening in the background here of this video is what we've been creating for the last almost eight years now is seven open source sustainable village models plus a sustainable city center designed so that people can build more affordable, more efficient, more sustainable demonstration hubs, teacher demonstration hubs around the world to teach others how to build more affordably, sustainably, and efficiently as well. Putting all these things together to create an evolution of sustainability, these village models that you see in the background are not just sustainable infrastructure, they're also the foundation for a complete expansion of sustainability to include the emotional foundations of sustainability that we think are really the key to sustainability spreading. And those emotional foundations are fulfilled living practices, an environment that provides more fulfilled ways of living within walking distance, right there. Highest good education models, models that are that cater to the individual, that are very hands-on for parents that want to be hands-on, that are a co-created process between the learner and the educator where parents can be involved in that. That's an advancement that takes all the different uh, alternative education models, looked at all the different alternative education models out there, and we took the best of the best and put them together to create our education program, and it's all open source and free shared. So it can be used in any environment, not just in a homeschooling environment, not just in a community environment, but in any environment, including a traditional schooling environment. So for people who don't like the education program, they can take the pieces that they do like and use those. Also, uh, high school economic models. Within the one community model, money will not need to exist for people living within the community. Everything will be provided for. And that doesn't mean we won't spend money as a community. We'll be buying things, of course. There's certain things that we won't be able to produce internally. You know, a refrigerator is not something that we're in, interested in building, at least not any time in the near future. You know, there are certain food items that it makes more sense to purchase than to try and grow ourselves, like wheat, grain. You know, those kinds of things, a lot of those are really challenging to process, and it's just become so efficient globally that we can get organic, high-quality versions of those much, much cheaper and easier than being able to grow them ourselves. But the economic model, the highest good economic model, is a model built on cooperation and collaboration and sharing instead of competition. And within one community, we'll be able to demonstrate that and show people that you could live in an environment where you would never need to carry a wallet. You know, you wouldn't need that because all those things would be handled on the community level. And then of course, the other aspect of emotional sustainability is truer stewardship, like teaching people how to become stewards of their environment, of their local environment, and then working in collaboration with their local communities, and then even on the national and international level, stewarding the planet, working in cooperation and collaboration with people around the world who also carry the consciousness, the highest good of all, that want to create a world that works for everybody. Why? Because we can. We have the knowledge. We have the ability. The technology exists. And so now all that needs to happen is to bring together enough people that can carry this consciousness, that can maintain it and keep making decisions for the highest good of all life. And it's a reason why we're open source. It's a reason why we're free sharing everything that we're doing. It's a reason why we're not going into debt to create this so that we can maintain our goals of open source, free sharing, resource-based economy, giving away everything that is that we're creating and making sure that we can maintain ourselves 
as an organization for the true highest good of all life on this planet, working together through consensus, through cooperation, through collaboration to create that and sharing that, being stewards, true stewards of our local environment, of our global environment, starting locally as the microcosm and expanding globally as the macrocosm, inviting anybody who wants to participate to do that. We can do this and create a world that works for everybody. And it starts by helping humanity create a world that works really well for them on the local level. And so, of course, we're doing this because we want to live this way. Because we want to live this way and we want to share this living with others and have them come experience what one community is, see it. They can either join our organization or go and create the same thing for themselves. Or if they have ideas for how to make it better, they can share those with us so that we can improve everything. Or they can go and do it their own way and make it better for themselves and open source and free share those evolutions. Helping humanity help themselves through open source, free sharing, all the foundations necessary to do that. And so that's what we're doing. That's what the seven village models are about. That's what the highest good education model, the highest good economic models, all these things, the truer stewardship models, open sourcing the energy and the food infrastructure so that people who want to can upgrade their life to a more sustainable life, to a more, more of a highest good way of living. And even if they don't want to do that, even if they have zero interest in any of that, that highest good aspect of it, because it's designed with the with the mentality from the beginning of creating something that is for the highest good, we see that using these things, even if that's not a, an individual's purpose, is still a step in the right direct, direction, and it's still helping humanity. And so this is what one community is doing. And we're an all-volunteer, nonprofit organization doing it. And so, uh, yeah, this is what we're up to. So with that said, here's one week of our team's progress and accomplishments working towards this goal, helping humanity through humanity, helping themselves, open source tools, tutorials, resources, do-it-yourself instructions for all aspects of highest good living. Take a look. The one community approach to highest good housing is eco-artistic home building that is affordable, sustainable, do-it-yourself duplicable, resource and space efficient, and consists of seven different sustainably constructed village models. This week, the core team continued design updates to the open source Murphy Bed Furniture Assembly Instructions. The focus this week was updating the table and bench structures with better and easier hinge options, eliminating some unnecessary parts, adding additional supports for the primary swivel hinge, and updating the related materials lists. You can see some of this work in progress here. The core team also created the initial web page setup and formatting for the new One Community Home Shares page that will share our structure for individualized and expanded designs of the standard homes in this village. You can see some of this work in progress here. Shadi Kennedy, artist and graphic designer, also completed his 23rd week leading the development of the Murphy Bed Instructions. This week he went through the latest SketchUp file and checked sizes, made new table and benches parts, added new parts to the parts list, and integrated it all as new assembly steps. You can see some of this work in progress here. Mike Kowalski, game developer, finished his 21st week helping update our renders that are too big for anything but a gaming computer. This week, Mike redid the Earthbag Village Pod 1 render, so it has all closed doors. Heyman Kotaru, structural engineer, completed his 22nd week helping with the structural engineering research and calculations for the Earthbag Village. This week's focus was writing the tutorial details for how to evaluate different soils for this type of construction. You can see some of this work here. Dean Schulz, architectural designer, also continued working on the Earthbag Village. Here's weekly update 131 from Dean. His focus this week was exploring new layouts for the bathroom and kitchen structure. You can see some of this work here. One community is also creating an open source duplicable city center. It is designed to be LEED Platinum certified, provide 12 guest rooms, dining for over 150 people, and laundry and recreation space for over 300 people, all while saving money, time, space, and resources. The core team working with Dipti Dondarkar, electrical engineer, also continued developing the lighting specifics for the city center. This is Dipti's 96th week volunteering on this task, and the focus this week was testing lighting options and finalizing the layouts and selections for the basement entry, which you can see here and now on the website too. The core team also continued updating the Pallet Furniture Open Source Hub by adding more cost analysis details and creating and adding the assembly graphics you can see here. We'd say this page is now about 75% complete. And the core team started adding the lead heating and air conditioning details to the city center HVAC design page. 
This week, we researched and finished the LEED credits overview and LEED HVAC related energy and atmosphere credits explained sections. You can see some of this work here, and we'd say this brings the addition of these details to 50% complete. Doa Feng, civil engineer, also completed his 22nd week working on the fire suppression and safety systems designs for the Duplical City Center Sprinkler and Emergency Systems Open Source Hub. This week, he finished updating the spreadsheets and AutoCAD designs for zones B and C with a new and more cost-effective design. You can see some of this work here. One community's approach to highest good food is duplicable almost anywhere, scalable for different needs, more biodiverse and nutritious, part of forwarding a global open source botanical garden collaborative, and includes nine different free shared and duplicable growing environments. This week, the core team continued writing the behind the scenes narrative and the detailed food rollout plan for the various stages of development. This week, we completed the food self-sufficiency transition plan and apiary page edits. We also made edits to the chicken section of the food rollout Google Doc. You can see some of this work here. In addition, the core team continued working on the apiary hive setup instructions. This week, we finished the construction details for a 10-frame Langstroth beehive section. You can see some of the new images and written content here on the behind-the-scenes Google development doc. One community's approach to highest good education is designed for all age groups, adaptable to any schooling environment, inspiring and fun for all participants, includes national standards, all subjects, lesson plans, teaching strategies, learning strategies and tools, classroom design, and more. With eight years invested in designing it, this component of one community is pretty much complete until we move on to the property and continue to develop it with teachers and students. Completed sections include comprehensive subject outlines covering arts and trades, English, health, math, science, social sciences, technology and innovation, and values. Also, 52 weekly themed lesson plans covering all the subjects we just mentioned, all learning levels and ages, and usable in any learning environment. 12 detailed and progressive curriculum outlines are also complete, Summaries and integration of all the best-known alternative education programs, including Montessori, Waldorf, ORF, Regio, and more, and leadership skills, collaborative assessment formats and forums, a global online free education resource hub, classroom design, and more. The one community approach to highest good society is globally focused, individually enriching, cooperative and collaborative, includes a highest good network and application, four different economic models, and combines fulfilled living and true earth stewardship for the benefit of all people and all life on this planet. This week, the core team working with Jin Hua, web and graphic designer, continued collaboration on our new online marketing strategy and our related grant. This week's focus was continued keyword strategy development and fine tuning of our current ads. You can see here some of the results of this and how the campaign for the open source free education database is progressing. This week, the Highest Good Network software team consisting of Samya Manahar, software engineer, web developer, and net application developer, and Shubra Mittal, software delivery manager, implemented validation for the forced password page, graying out of role field for non-administrators, MongoDB schedule job to auto-assign blue squares if weekly volunteer time commitment is not met, and bug fixes for a new application outage issue. There you have it. There's one week of our team's progress and accomplishments working towards this goal of helping humanity by providing open source tools, tutorials, resources, and do-it-yourself instructions for all aspects of what we call highest good living. Uh, if you'd like to see more details, more specifics, links to all the open source content, our research, all this stuff, visit our written blog, visit our website. There's so much information there. Take a look at it. Uh, if you'd like to help out, visit our helping page. Uh, join us on social media. It's the easiest way to get involved with our project. We are on all the different social media networks to make it as easy as possible. We are on LinkedIn. We are on Tumblr. We are on Reddit. We are on Pinterest. We are on Twitter. We are on uh, Instagram. We are on we are on about 15 other social media networks as well, all the major ones. So wherever it is that you're at, High Five and a few others, uh, find us there. We're there. And help us share the information. Like the easiest way to help us out, like our posts, comment on our posts, help us share some of our content from the website, whatever it is that inspires you most, help us get the word out there. That's the easiest thing to do. Of course, uh, it's also helpful if you've just watched this video. If you know about our project, if you're supporting us from the sidelines, just paying attention, we do appreciate that as well. If you're somebody who's donated to our project, 
thank you for that also. You know, donations are very much appreciated. We're an all unpaid staff. I'm not paid. Nobody else on our team is paid. So 100% of donations go towards forwarding our global mission and helping to create world change, helping humanity uh, through open source tools, tutorials, and resources, everything that we're creating. So if you're somebody who's donated to our project, thank you. And thank you for the watching to the end. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your emails. It all makes a difference every little bit. And so, uh, yeah, from the bottom of my heart, thanks for being a part of our project in whatever way works best for you. We appreciate it. Until next week, we will, of course, keep on keeping on. Thanks.